What's up, everyone? This is Joshua from Respace Healing. Today, I want to talk about what does it mean when you have high reverse T3. But before we jump in, as always, please like this video, show us a little support. Hit that subscription button and notification button so every single Wednesday when we put out a video, you get notified. Let's jump in. So you went to the doctor and the doctor told you you had a high reverse T3, which 99% of the time this will never happen because doctors don't test reverse T3 and they don't believe it's a valid mechanism that they should be testing. Well, I completely disagree. When you get a full panel of TSH, free T3, free T4, TPO, T3 uptake, you should always add reverse T3. This can show you, is it a really a thyroid problem or is it a functional hypothyroid problem or is there an illusion of a thyroid problem? There's no really thyroid issue. This is reverse T3, right? Because anytime you have high reverse T3, it's showing you there's chronic stress in the system. There's nothing wrong with the thyroid. It's chronic stress affecting the thyroid, <clears throat> giving the illusion of a thyroid problem. There's no medication needed, no supplements needed. All that's needed is you need to change how you're living, you need to change your environment, change what and when you're eating to meet your needs to reduce the stress, right? So you don't overproduce reverse T3, which affects T3 receptors and T4, T3 conversion, which will regulate your thyroid. So anytime there's chronic stress in the system, whether it's starvation, dysregulated blood pressure, I'm sorry, dysregulated blood sugar, we're not meeting our needs on a daily basis. We're moving beyond our needs. We're overworking, overtraining, under eating. This is America, right? Or wherever you live, there's chronic stress in the system. The body will overproduce cortisol, why? Because a lot of systems go up. Thyroid hormones go up, the immune system goes up. This is natural, this should happen. The problem is when it's chronic and unmitigated and it just is going and going, the body says, I need to control this. I need to try to reduce inflammation. So the body just drives up cortisol to try to push these things down. It's a protective mechanism. This is the good guy, but we demonize it. The problem is that excess cortisol will inhibit 5-deoninase enzyme type 1, which affects the conversion of T4 to T3, but also will stimulate 5-deoninase type 3, which will cause the body to overconvert T4 into reverse T3. Now, while you naturally, naturally, when you convert an active thyroid hormone, T4, you produce T3. You will produce a little bit reverse T3, right? There are normal levels, but when there's chronic stress in the system and that cortisol inhibits 5 deoninase type 1, now you're going to have a conversion issue. Now you're going to have a conversion of T4 to T3. You might have low T3 levels, right? This is not a sign of a thyroid problem. There's a sign there's a conversion issue because of chronic stress on the 5 deoninase type 1. But at the same time, cortisol will affect 5 prime deoninase type 3, which will cause T4 to be overproduced into reverse T3. This will affect T3 receptors. The list goes on. So it creates this illusion of a thyroid problem when there's really not a thyroid problem itself. It's really chronic stress in the system. Now, in this scenario, I'm not a doctor. This is not medical advice. There's no supplements that are needed. There's no medications that are needed. What is needed is the labs are showing you, I need to change. I need to change how I'm living, my mindset, how I'm eating, not overnight, over time, because how I'm living is creating so much stress in my system. Now it's affecting my, let's say, endocrinology. It's affecting my thyroid, which of course is going to be affecting other systems. And if I begin to slowly change, right, the cause, I'll naturally change the effect. I'll reduce that excess cortisol coming in. I'll take the burden off the adrenals because I'm reducing stress in my life. I'm meeting my needs. Maybe I'm living life instead of working all the time. I'm finding a little more balance. I'm nourishing my system instead of trying to cut carbs or cut foods and fast all the time. I'm looking at when I'm, where I'm working out so I'm not overtraining, right? And, and, and placing so much demand on my system. Now we take the burden off the adrenals. Now we support these five prime deoninase enzymes. Thus, we support the conversion of T4 to T3 and the conversion of T4 to healthy amounts of reverse T3 so we don't affect conversion or the receptor sites. And there we take away the illusion of the thyroid issue and you don't have a thyroid issue anymore, which you never had in the first place. So 
Hopefully this video makes sense. Hopefully it's a sign that, oh my God, because we hear this all the time. I had high reverse T3 and my doctor put me on T3. This is very dangerous because now you're taking something you don't need. You can actually shut the system down, shut down the negative feedback loops, or you could create a thyroid resistance. But at the same time, we're not creating change. So how can we, how can we expect a result from taking T3? when the driver of chronic stress is still in the system. We won't really see much result. And if we do feel something, it's because we're taking T3, which is like energy in a pill. And of course it can, for some of us, it can make us feel better. And for some of us, it can actually decrease our appetite, cause sleep issues and rapid heart rate. So there's a lot to think about, a lot to unwind and a lot to sit back and say, maybe I need to dive in a little bit more and, and look at this and say, am I really meeting my needs? Am I doing things the way I should to meet my body's needs, to take the burden off the system, to allow the system to do what it's designed to do, which is create health. As always, thanks for tuning in. I'm out.